Welcome back, everyone. <laughs> you got to stop making faces. Uh, you know, I mean, you've got to stop saying funny things. <laughs> <laughs> hey, welcome. Uh, it's Thursday. It's time to get smart, find out what's going on in the world of finance, and there's always interesting things going on with none other than Steve Carlton, first vice president, Jenny Montgomery Scott. Thanks, Jesse. Nice to have you here. So uh, we always talk a little bit before we go on camera, and you managed to tell me that you need to ask the first question tonight. Yes, sir. So, you, everyone knows how much Jesse and I love cars, and we're both car people, and who, who doesn't like an in, uh, interesting automobile? So I thought you'd like to hear this firsthand. Okay. We uh, had record sales in the automobiles, eight-year high. Cars are moving off the lots. So Car sales in the U.S.? Car sales eight in the year U.S., eight-year high. Oh, then I'm going to play Steve Carlton. That's durable goods. Steve? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, it is. Is it? Yeah, right. yeah, no, absolutely it is. Yeah, that's, is. That, that is one of those benchmarks. Auto sales are a huge barometer mm -hmm. of consumer health, consumer spending. If they're confident, they feel more mm -hmm. secure in the situation, then we're off to buy a new car. So good positive sign. Well, you know, it's just so funny because you were involved in uh, so many different global conflicts right now and stuff like that. But when you look at the picture at home mm. and something like car sales, those are real indicators of people's willingness to spend and invest, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I, oh, those man. are one of the things that we look for. And, you know, we talk about things gradually improving. And, yes. you know, we're still not out of the woods yet, but that's one of the things we want to see. Well, that's something I want to pick up on that I want to talk to you about. Uh, the stock market, all-time high. Yeah, we keep it. Dow and S&P, right? This afternoon, I saw another interday high in the S&P and the Dow, and I, I just... There's a lot of things working for us. So, you right. know, today option expiration, so tonight and tomorrow, a lot of options have to be covered. And so mm -hmm. as the market keeps going up higher, people that are shorting, thinking the market's going to go lower, have mm -hmm. to go back and buy. Um, a lot of people hedged with Janet Yellen right. talking on Wednesday. People, a lot of individuals are thinking that the, mark, the Fed was going to become more hawkish on the market, more aggressive right. on interest rates. And we didn't hear that. In fact, it was still fairly dovish. It was still this continue the trend that we're seeing. And so a lot of individuals who hedged, thinking the market was going to go that direction, had to come back in and buy. Mm -hmm. uh, and then thirdly, I think the next the really big thing that's going on is this Alibaba thing that everybody's not really sure what it is, but right. it's creating a lot of enthusiasm. Let me cycle back just on a couple of things, and, yeah. and you've done this before, and um, I know I appreciate it, and I'm sure the viewers do. Uh, the measurement, the mm. Dow and the S&P. Sure. Let's just go back into that again. What is mm. the Dow? So the, the, the Dow is those 30 stocks that we look at. It's a, it's a slice of the market. It's the mm -hmm. 30 stocks, in the U, just U.S. stocks, that kind of give us, it's the one that everybody in the news talks about. Right now That's it's right. a little over 17,000. Mm -hmm. um, the S&P 500 is 500 stocks right. that are U.S. domestic broader stocks. Broader look. A little bit broader look, a little bit more accurate benchmark in some people's mm -hmm. perspective. And so you look at the, both of those to kind of give a feel for where the U.S. equity market's going. You know, at some time, not tonight, but at some time I'd love to get in there and just talk about how you view both of those indicators. The, the accuracy yes, and, and, and the accuracy. Yeah, and yeah there's, like there's that. other, there, there are other, uh, indexes that are out there that are more diverse and larger, mm -hmm. but yeah, that's it's the more common of them. Uh, I just want to also cycle back on one thing you said. Uh, Yellen giving a speech mm -hmm. has such an immediate effect mm -hmm. on the market, mm -hmm. and the fact that people thought she was going to be more hawkish, maybe they pulled out mm -hmm. when she decided not to yeah. make those moves. People came back into the market. Yeah, right? so, so so Chair Yellen, uh, I think she is is being very very open and very very candid about things. She's not being rigid about setting specific dates or specific metrics that trigger mm -hmm. interest rate increases. So she's got a fair bit of flexibility, and I think they're looking at the same things that we're looking at, like housing sales, mm -hmm. uh, mortgage financing. You know, th those mm -hmm. are really really weak, but yet we've got um, builders at nine year high confidence. So those mixed yeah, signals right. where we're we're getting different in indicators on how the overall health of the economy is doing. The unemployment number is improving, but yet earnings are not necessarily as strong as they could be. And so mm. I think the Fed is, is erring on the side of caution, saying let's not tighten things up too quickly because we're not seeing it broad and strong uh, and as, as maybe as healthy as they'd like to see. Boy, I always love getting your, your thoughts on this stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, just You just brushed past uh, unemployment. Mm -hmm. New York State. Um, the benefit levels in New York State were just changed, right? And, and, and they absolutely needed to. Uh, they raised the minimum, which was, I believe, $64 a week mm -hmm. to $100 a week. Now, this is benefits. So this is the unemployment. Right. So if you lose right. your job, the, before it was $64 a week was the, min the minimum you could get. And then it was the maximum was 405. That was raised to, I believe, 420 or 425. Mm -hmm. So that, that reflects the fact that everybody's cost of living are going up. And uh, so Cuomo came out and announced it and said, you know, we've got to raise those things. And so that comes into effect, I believe it's October 6th. 
Gotcha. Uh, Steve, locally, a couple of big events this week. Yes. Uh, Warren County, the Adirondack Balloon Festival. Yes, I've gotten uh, a few of those in the last yeah, couple of years. They're it, neat to uh, see, yeah. Uh, it's, just, it's just wonderful. A lot of people, big on families and things yeah. like that. And the uh, Blue Mountain Lake at the Adirondack Museum mm. is the antique show and sale, which is another benchmark activity for the fall. I know you get excited about that kind of stuff as it comes this time of year. You start to, yeah. Well, I can, I can see it in the eyes. The age jokes here, okay? Because I got a feeling somebody's birthday is around the corner. You know, you can't believe all the rumors that you hear, you know? <laughs> well, it might thinking, be true. I was thinking, you know, if it's your birthday this weekend, you can go up to the Adirondack Antique Sale and probably buy back your bed when you were a kid and your bicycle the and stuff like that. The vinyl track records, there A track go. and those kind of things. Well, yeah, maybe we should both check it out. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's why I'm drinking Pepsi today because it's the choice of the new generation. <laughs> I'm feeling a little older. Yeah. I was just going to say, yeah. I even think that slogan is a little old, by the way. It, I, I, I'm, I'm dating gonna, myself, I think. You're dating yourself uh, constantly. Uh, one last thing, Alibaba. Mm. Yes. Uh, IPO tomorrow, right? Yes, yes it is. Uh, yep. Big news. Uh, yeah. What's Alibaba? Oh my goodness, how do I answer that in <laughs> under... So basically what Alibaba is, is people think it's like Amazon, where you go onto the website and you buy things. It is a media, it's a conduit where manufacturers, people that are looking to have things made mm -hmm. where they can go and have it. So say, for example, there's a bike store in Glens Falls or Warren, Washington mm -hmm. County that wants to get uh, 15 bicycles made. Mm -hmm. They can go to the manufacturer in China and have them made and go direct to the manufacturer so they can cut out the middlemen, they can cut out some of those expenses. Mm -hmm. So if you're a company that makes fleeces or you're a company mm -hmm. that... that the ability to go direct to manufacturing and have things made quickly, mm -hmm. effectively, cost-effective. So it's not generally direct to the consumer. Mm -hmm. So it's not like an Amazon, and people mm -hmm. sometimes mistake it that way. But I, the best way to describe it is they don't have f the factories themselves. They don't have places here in the New York. It is, it is simply a conduit where it brings two sides, the buyers and sellers, together. That, that can only help commerce. Yeah, because it, you figure that the direct relationship between somebody and a manufacturer and the consumer benefiting because mm. of the lack of having to work through certain middlemen or whatever. Yeah. But what I was reading this morning was that they think it might be the biggest IPO since like 2007. Yeah, well, the, it's a, right. actually a good example. We had 2007, you had Visa come out, and it right. was up 24, 25% that year. It was a big, huge play, a lot of enthusiasm. Mm -hmm. There hasn't been a lot that have come out in their first year and done really well. I think this is a lot of hope, a lot of enthusiasm. Um, you know, there's no doubt about it. There's a ton of interest in this, but, uh, you know, it remains to be seen. It, it could be, you know, one of those things that uh, turns uh, out to be huge. You know, yeah, huge or the opposite. Yeah, you absolutely. You, you definitely want to talk to your financial advisor. Um, sure you... I suppose just one last thing uh, yeah. from the notes that I had taken. Mm. Uh, monumental decision being made today in the United Kingdom, oh. uh, in Scotland. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. 238 years, the United mm -hmm. Kingdom's been united, united. as one nation. Right. And they've gone through a lot of things, and, and for them to be having this vote today is huge. The voter mm -hmm. turnout's huge. I've been watching on the news during the day. Um, this, this, the implications of this uh, in Europe are huge. London's the second financial hub of the That's world. Right. So, yeah, I, I, I think it's leaning more towards a no, but, mm -hmm. but it, it's too close to call. But the implications are big. I got you. Yeah. So next week uh, we'll talk about that because before we went on air, yeah. um, the whole idea that uh, what goes on in Europe with such a global economy now mm -hmm. will filter back into the States. Oh, yeah. Well, thanks very much, Steve. And if it just happens to be your birthday this weekend, happy birthday. <laughs> thanks, Jesse. <laughs> 39 again. <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. I know that one real well. Great to see you, Steve. Thanks so much. Uh, to see this interview again, head to our website, looktvonline.com.